Hey, hey, good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. It's time for another Friday morning live. Your favorite day to wake up. <laughs> your favorite wake up, favorite day to wake up to. Friday morning live. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? I'm going to just let me see if I'm cool. I'm live. Awesome. All right. So we got a exciting show. I'm excited to talk about today because I think that I I'm on to something. I think I can shine some light here on a slightly different angle to a boring subject for a lot of people. <laughs> so we'll get into that. Let me know if you're watching here in the comments. It's always nice to know who's in here. And if you're watching a replay, let us know if you're watching the replay as well. Good morning, Jen. Jen, you're a top fan. I don't know if you can see that little icon on the on the comment, but thank you for being a top fan for our page. That tea could have been a bit warmer, hotter. Jen, are you drinking tea? I know Jen's a tea fan. Let's see how we're doing with my setup. It's a little bit darker than I would like, but we're gonna rock it. We're doing okay this morning. It's a bit foggy outside right now. It's kind of cool. But I think that's going to lift. You know the sun's coming up sooner? I'm very excited about that. I love the sunshine. <laughs> like most people do. A lot of people do. But unfortunately, at least in Alberta where a lot of people are watching this, it's going to be a long... The winters are, are long. That's how it rolls. So today I'm going to talk about how to turn always one or two a day. Oh, one or two teas a day. Awesome. Yeah, me too. I'm uh, at least one. I'm like two, three, depending on the day. <laughs> so I want to tell you about turning wants into um, achievements. And achievements are so uplifting. I think it's really difficult to explain to people how important achievements are because they help us work towards the things that we want to. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. And I'm going to try to stay away from the word goals because no one wants to no one wants to hear about the word goals. So I'm going to talk about achievements. I'm going to replace that word <laughs> for achievements because I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of ways we can be successful and it really it's really based around motivation like well someone say a lot of people are like well, why would I why would I work to achieve something let's say or why would I try to set myself up a goal because there's the opportunity there's this there's the saying that says oh if you never set a goal then you never fail <laughs> which is kind of funny I suppose but you would you set yourself achievements because that's where the motivation comes from. So the very root of motivation is setting yourself achievements to work towards. So that's why it's important to understand that the re the reason like it wakes you up when you like when you get up and you don't really want to do what you said you were going to do or you don't want to get your workout in, let's say, that achievement that you're working towards, that's what wakes you up. So <clears throat> that's why it's important to set these achievements for yourself, the things that you want to work towards. And I want, I'm going to explain today the difference between the difference between wants, like so many people are like, oh, well, I want to do this, or I want to lose weight. I want to lose inches. I got, that comes up all the time. Um, we got Sue in here. Dorothy jumped in here. Leona jumped in here. And Dorothy says, I just finished my 50th run on the treadmill in a row. Yes. Congrats, Dorothy. That is awesome. We are so proud of you for getting on there every single day. Um, so I want to explain how you can change your wants, the things that you want to accomplish, into achievements. So there's a big difference between the two and there's a large gap. And we'll, we'll talk about that today. Um, so Dorothy, morning Jason, Dorothy, would you like to share in the comments what your goal is? 
<laughs> Instead of me sharing it for you, maybe you share it. Maybe you share it for us. But that's amazing. So Dorothy, she has has a goal to, she's going to share with us in a moment here, but she's 50 days in a row on a treadmill is, is crazy. And, I, and she said to herself, like, it doesn't matter how fast I'm going, how long I'm going for, just commit. And, and that's something that needs to be done. That's something that needs to be done to find that internal motivation. So we hear it all the time. It's a, it's a regular question. It's a question that comes to us weekly, at least weekly, a couple times a week. Like, well, how can I find motivation to do this? How can I motivate my kids to do this? That one's, that one's coming up a bit more often now because so many people are stuck at home and the, the kids, the kids are stuck at home. They don't really know what to do to get them active and such. So it's a bit more challenging to explain this to kids, but I'm hoping that once I explain this to you, that you'll be able to implement it yourself. And I'll give you my own example of what I'm doing, what I'm kind of going through. Morning, Vanda. And then hopefully you can take that. And you know what's interesting? Like I'm, I'm excited. Like I feel like I'm on to something. I really do. Because you know, everyone's heard of those SMART goals, S, the acronym S-M-A-R-T. I don't even know what they are. What's S? S is, I don't know what S is. Does anyone know? M is measurable. A is probably actionable. I, they, they don't work. Like that's what they taught us in personal training. Have your client set up SMART goals. And like no one does them. So, <laughs> so the reason, there's three reasons why people don't set achievements. They don't set them is because they don't know how they don't want to put in the work or they <laughs> there's so they either don't oops so they either they're they're not sure how like we weren't really taught a proper way to to achieve um not putting in the work is definitely one of them because it does take time and effort it takes time and effort just to plan it and then you have to put in the action and then there is one more that has eluded me. I'll get back to you though. Oh, specific then it says, thank you. <laughs> Carrie's in here. Morning, Carrie. Um, and then so Dorothy's goal here. Let's read Dorothy's goal because or Dorothy's achievement. I'm calling them achievements because I don't want to get people turned off instantly. <laughs> Dorothy says, if you don't do it within five seconds, there's a good chance you won't do it. Count down four, three, two, one, do it. That's right. You just got it. And I, I feel like that's a habit. Sometimes I think about something and I'm like, mm, don't really want to do that. But then I'm like, just do it. Because if I don't do it now, it's going to be two weeks later. I'm going to be thinking about it forever. And then by the time I do it, it's been on my mind holding me back, which is procrastination, something we're going to talk about something we're going to talk about as well so it's important to understand that there's reasons why we don't we don't we don't do things and i i have the third one <laughs> i have the third one i just can't think of it right now but there's definitely reasons why we don't set ourselves achievements and so i have to go back to not not understanding how i think people those that don't want to put in the work because that's one of the three main reasons why people don't set achievements they don't want to put in the work is because they don't really know how. So those two are kind of together. So those are almost the same one. So let's explain how we can set this up for you so you can set yourself up with achievement. And remember when, when I went back there, or remember going back, I talked about how most people talk about struggling with motivation. So I wasn't able to get out of bed. I wasn't able to get my workout in. I didn't really feel like meal planning or going to the grocery store, whichever it is. Of course, we're a nutrition and fitness company, so we're talking about lifestyle here, and we're talking about living healthier. There's a number of different things we could talk about. We could talk about finances or saving money, for example. You could talk about spirituality. A lot of people want to pray more or meditate more or be more mindful. There's, I'm hoping that this program that I'm experimenting with now and trying to put together, well, and, and, and putting together, is going to be interchangeable for whatever achievement you want to accomplish. Morning, we got Pamela in here. 
thanks thanks everyone for jumping in if you're jumping in and out you're more than welcome to hang out with us and talk about achievements today i feel like everyone should be working towards something everyone should have an achievement and that just goes back to the motivation and living inspired and i feel like there's there's it's like night and day you have you could have the same person at different times in their life that have an achievement to work towards and don't and they are so much more excited and so much more happy motivated inspired to live life and then you have those other people that don't really have anything to work towards and they are um they just kind of going through the motions until they find something to work towards. Or you could find two completely different people and one person lives incredibly inspired and then other people live uninspired and, and living inspired, I think, is the essence of life. Morning, Michael. Michael Lentz jumped in here. How you doing? I know you had a recent move not too long ago. I hope that's all going well with her, you and the family. Dorothy says having a goal gives you a reason to wake up inspired. It does. Dorothy, are you sharing your goal with us or did you? I'm going to share mine with you. I just thought, does anyone else have any achievements that they're working towards? Sue says, congratulations, Dorothy. I missed that one. Oh, wow. How did I get so late? Suzanne jumped in here as well. She says, good morning, everyone. Dorothy says, when I'm not waking up towards uh, achievement, I feel like I'm just doing, I'm just doing the motion. I'm just going through the motions. She said I did share. Oh, right here. 365 days of running. That's right. So that's all. Thank you. I got it. So that's Dorothy's goal or achievement that she's working towards. So she's going to jump on the treadmill. So what about, or sorry, running. I didn't mean to say, I didn't mean to say treadmill because Hopefully, there'll be a time where she can run outside and maybe in warmer climates. Or, um, So 365 days of running. So every single day she's committed to running this year, which is a huge achievement that she's working towards. It's, like you gotta, it's a grind every single day. She didn't even give herself an, an off day. <laughs> but I think it's, 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 it's profound it's actually it's extraordinary you know so everyone is like have these like meanings toward these big words like what's extraordinary i've never done anything extraordinary in my life it's just extraordinary it's things that people most people don't usually do or things that you don't do yourself on a regular basis morning mom so the the biggest thing here is that when it comes to an achievement you have to figure out why it is that you're going to achieve that goal. So Dorothy says, misses no days off this year. <laughs> so we have to consider what the reason is bef be before we set that achievement. So I want to, I can think about Julie Weiss, for example, she's in our running club. She came on my ex um, transformations through running podcast and it's all, that's an all running podcast. But so she ran for, she ran 50 marathons in 50 days, or sorry, 50 marathons in 50 weeks to um, raise awareness and raise money for pancreatic cancer. And you may be able to link the two that her father passed away from pancreatic cancer. So understand that that is very emotional for her because she was very close to her father. So for her, to have a reason and a purpose behind why she said, I'm going to run like 50, like a marathon a week. That's a lot. I think most people, like, I think a high number is like, maybe, I don't even know. I couldn't even guess eight for the year or 10 for the year. So 50, like one a week is a lot. You're, it takes a lot, a toll on your body. It takes a toll on your mind, phys physically, mentally, emotionally, but the purpose behind her reason for that achievement was so strong that nothing was going to get in her way from doing that. So in, we need to relate whatever it is your achievement is to something. Now, that's extreme, of course. It doesn't have to be like, your reason or your reasoning or your why. It doesn't have to be that extreme, but it should be. It should have some type of connection. Um, we had Lori jump in here. Good morning, Lori. So let me give you an, another example. 
Um, Ch Chance is a good one. So Chance ran, Dorothy, you might have to help me out here. He ran, he ran, he ran a hundred days, a uh, minimum of 5k and he was raising money or raising money and awareness for mental health. And I know one of his good friends, um, his good friend, the, the, had a child that had, um, I don't know how to say this politically correct. They had some very serious mental mental health issues and of course it's also apparent in today there's a lot of people dealing with mental health issues so i feel like it's so apparent these days that we're we all know someone that's going through a really hard time mentally and it's mostly because of the seclusion of course and we like most of us are even i've even heard from introverts as 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 i am that they still need some type of physical connection but because so many people are isolated and stuck and not able to live the regular life that the mental health is really suffering at a high level so um that was important to to chance to run a hundred days straight of at least five k's because of his reasoning and that those are just two running those are two running goals i can tell you but i'm going to tell you about mine here as well but it's important for you, for you to understand that there has to be a reason. That reason to set your achievement will take it to the next level. So you can still get through your day-to-day -day activities. You can still get through your workouts, your meals, whatever it is. But if you connect that reasoning, so let me take, let me give Dorothy, uh, let me go through Dorothy, Dorothy's for an example. So she did 365 days. That's a long time. So that's a long term that needs to be broken up or broken down into smaller segments if you will which is which is what she is doing or has done so the first month was just to, those first 30 days break it up into 30 days is just to get on the treadmill doesn't matter how long what you're doing and then this month the next month this is her second month she's doing um a minimum of 3k so that's her that's her goal of or sorry her achievement her mini one of 3k so there's a big achievement and then it's broken down so you have one thing you have one thing to focus on and one thing to look forward to so for me offering accountability i decided to set a set an achievement for myself to walk on my hands for 10 seconds <laughs> so for me that's a, that's a big deal i've been able to i can hold a handstand i can hold a handstand for like a couple seconds and that was good enough for me when I first started. I was like, I want to, and this was, I've been doing handstands on and off for a few years now. And I was like, I always wanted to do a handstand. So I taught myself how to do a handstand and I can hold it for, you know, two or three seconds, three or four seconds. Not, and, you know, not really thinking much about it. I just thought, oh, that'd be cool. Pictures look cool when people are doing handstands. So then I set a, a new goal for my, a new achievement for myself. And I said, I want to be able to actually walk on my hands because I think it's cool. So my reasoning for me, what I can connect that with is I think it's really cool when people are actually walking on their hands. It, it physically challenges a person. It definitely challenges me. So and I like I, like these types of things inspire me to do physically challenging things with my body because I feel like if one person can do it, I should be able to do it. And I want to challenge myself mentally and physically. So those are a couple of reasons right there. So. One of them is because I've never really been able to do it. I think it, it interests me. Like, I think it's really cool personally. And I set, I set this structure up, which I'm explaining to you today. And I'm hoping that more people will be inspired to set achievements because the old way of setting goals doesn't work. Like that's all there is to it. And I don't know, I know very few people and I feel like I know I, I live in an, an inspired world. I know very few people that actually set achievements for themselves. And it's because we don't know how. It's because it takes some work and time and effort to put into them. But it's really that that same structure that everyone's been following. So I'm like, maybe there's a different way to do this. And for me to experiment and help inspire other people, that also interests me. So notice you notice for Julie, for example, hers was very specific to herself. So someone else can't come in and say, oh, well, you should do this because of this. 
it, it doesn't work. There's no connection. There's not an emotional connection. There's no reason for you to actually get there and do it. Um, for, for Chance, he had a really good friend that he wanted to help out and help raise awareness and help raise uh, donations and, and money, for example. So that was very personal to him. For me, it doesn't really interest me to run. It does. I run because it because I like getting outside. I like because I like it. That gets me in shape. Makes me feel good. Breathe fresh air. Like, I, but it doesn't really interest me. So for me to set a running goal, it doesn't make it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense because I'm gonna lose interest. It's not personal to me. So when you guys are setting your achievements, they have to be very personal to you. No one can tell you what it is. Maybe people can help you. Someone can help you brainstorm. But you're not going to be able to have someone be like, you should do that because it's not personal to you. So we're pretty quiet here. <laughs> are, we, are we intently listening? So if anyone, I know this is, this off, off, almost gets zero comments, but does anyone have any achievements that they want to share with us? Um... What's the next what's the next step I can tell you about? I have this all written down. It's all step by step. So once you decide, so for me it was so for me it was walking on my hands for 30 days. And that's a big step. It really is. And if those of you that haven't done handstands or have never walked on your handstands, there's a lot of room for improvement. There's a lot of room for failure there. For me, when I hold a handstand for three seconds, it feels like it's ten minutes. <laughs> so I wanted to, so I wanted to take that up to the next level and actually be able to walk. And then I said walk for 10 seconds, which is quite a duration, I feel. Now, one of the things that, that's important for me is I set a, a very specific timeline of 30 days. I said, let me see if I can accomplish this in 30 days. I don't know if I can. I've, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have full belief. There's just a little bit of doubt and there's a little bit of fear. And if there isn't doubt and if there isn't fear in the achievement that you're trying to accomplish, then it's not big enough. You haven't you haven't dreamed big enough. If you're like, because that's what helps inspire you and helps motivate you. If you say to yourself, oh, I could do it. Like one of my achievements is to make myself a cup of tea in the morning. Like, well, <laughs> that's not going to, <clears throat> excuse me, that's not going to inspire anyone because a seven-year-old could do that. You, you know, put, put put the kettle on, you pour it in the cup. You know what I'm saying? So it needs to be something that's, there's a bit of doubt and then there's a bit of fear. And that's the fear. Like the essence is the fear that needs to get you moving on. And that needs to be there to be like, oh, if I don't get the work in, maybe I'm not going to accomplish my goal. So I took my achievement. So I took the 30 days. Morning, Sue. I took the 30 days and I broke them down into 10 day segments. So for, for 10 days, I broke that down and said, I, I'm going to be able to mindset words are powerful. I'm going to be able to hold a handstand for five seconds, which I don't, which I haven't been able to do. Not anytime soon. Maybe when I first started out with handstands and I was inspired, but not within the last year or so, hold a handstand for 10 seconds without support of the wall tree whatever it is i'm doing someone holding my leg we've done that before too with dorothy so so i broke that down after 10 10 days i'm going to be able to hold that for five seconds then after another 10 days see what i'm doing here is giving myself something to look forward to i'm looking forward to that 10 days and then i set myself a small achievement so it's like oh my gosh how am i ever going to be able to walk on my hands for 10 seconds i can't even hold a handstand for 10 seconds so I broke that down into 10 days. After 10 days, I should be able to do this. And then you change your mindset. I will be able to do this. So that's for five seconds. Then for after 10 days after that, this is all guessing and testing. I don't know. And one of the biggest issues is the time frame. So people try something like weight loss. They try to lose weight for a week. <laughs> they sign up with a personal trainer. They go to the gym. I had this happen myself personally as a personal trainer. People would show up for a week or two and they wouldn't lose weight after a week and they'd quit. And I was like, I'm like, it's been a week. It's been a week. 
So that time frame is challenging, which I'm going to talk about here as well. I got, I know I got some comments here. I'm going to read. Thank you for the comments, you guys. And if you are enjoying the show, that hearts button makes me feel good too. It also helps with the algorithms. So if you hit that little hearts button, I do appreciate that. If you're enjoying the show. So from the 10, so after the 10 days of the handstand, handstand holding for five seconds, I said, well, if I can hold a handstand for five seconds, I should probably be able to walk for about five seconds. So after another 10 days, I have set another achievement that I can be able to walk for another five seconds, which would bring me halfway towards 10 seconds of the ultimate five or 10 minute, or sorry, 10 seconds that I'm working towards. So let me read some comments and then I'll carry on with that explanation. This is my Ashi Taba tea that I'm gonna drop in my teacup. I'm a bit worried about my computer. Like I went and I, I went and I cleared some of my space, but my computer like it shuts off if the storage is full. And I only had five gigabytes, so. I think I have to get through this relatively quick. What's up, Dave? Okay, Vanda says, I would like to be able to do a cartwheel. I used to when I was younger, often, but now it terrifies me. I like to get past the mental block because I know my body can do it, I think. <laughs> That's awesome, Vanda. So this gives me a chance to coach, if you will. It gives me a chance to give you guys different scenarios. See, what I love about this here, Vanda, this is fantastic. What I love about this one here is that it's an action. So the biggest problem that I see when people say, I want to lose weight, let's say that's an easy one to pick on because most people, we got Roger jumped in here. Morning, Roger. Because when I used to sit, I used to sit in the gym across from someone and I would say as a personal trainer, how I started out a number of years ago, I would say, what do you want out of this? Like, why are you coming to me? What's the main, and, and most people like 9.9 times out of 10 people would say I, I don't know I want to get in better shape or they, they, they don't they have no purpose no reason nothing to inspire them no motivation they just thought uh, like I'm supposed to, like I was told to get healthy I need to get healthy and that's it so and of course like I said that's why I'm saying that one of the big reasons main reasons people don't set achievements is because they don't know how or why or what they want to get out of it So you have to decide what it is, but that large percentage of people that come to me and they, and they say, I want to lose weight. Well, that's not an action. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's not an action like an, a handstand or running or cartwheels. Like these are all actions that we can work with. You can, like, and on top of that, so losing weight isn't an action. It's a byproduct of, of an action. So your main achievement is something you need to work towards, which is an action. And I feel like this is like, all these steps are so important, but I feel like this is so such a key aspect because if you have an action, you're doing something physically to work towards that weight loss, if you will. But, and of course it has to be interesting. It has to be exciting. Who's excited about losing weight? I've never heard anyone wake up and, and say, can't wait to lose weight today. <laughs> It, I mean, it doesn't happen. So the very purpose for most people when they said achievements is to lose weight, which no one's excited about. No one wants to do that. That's what they want. That's the, that's a byproduct of their achievement. That's That could come as they live healthier, as they're more active, as they set smaller achievements to work towards their big achievement. Weight loss is a byproduct. But if that's your main reason... It's not exciting, it's not interesting. In fact, most people hate it. So setting yourself up for something to work towards that you don't like, <laughs> most people are gonna fail because they don't like it. So, all right, so Vanda, all these steps that I'm sharing with here in this show are going to help you understand where, where I'm getting at, but I'll run through this real quick for you specifically because you're brave enough to share this with us. So. Um, you want to do so you want to do a cartwheel so a cartwheel I really think that I'm gonna fly by this real quick I, I feel like a supportive community is super important as you know um, 
so a supportive community of people that you can tell this to, like tell people you want to do a cartwheel. I think it's very, well, I know it's very important to find some type of mentor or coach that can show you how to do a cartwheel. And then of course you could, you could find it's, you can nowadays, like I'm watching YouTube videos to learn handstands. So you could watch, I like hundred percent, like to be hundred percent honest with you, I would watch how kids learn how to do cartwheels on uh, like how a coach teaches a little kid how to do a cartwheel because it's a very broken down process. Like you get used to your hands and then you do like hand, like you should probably do like wrist strengthening exercises and you can break it down and instead of trying to do it in like one time or two days you break that down into 30 days or three months and you say okay this month um, or this week i'm going to focus on strengthening exercises you like flexibility is a thing as well which i'm learning with handstands is that your hamstrings have to be flexible so maybe the next month you work on hamstring flexibility because your legs you want to like a full cart where your legs are straight as they come around and to make them straight, your legs have to be flexible. I mean, and don't get me wrong, maybe yours are. I'm just saying that. Thank you for the hearts, you guys. I appreciate that. So, uh, finding a supportive community, finding a mentor or a coach, which is what we're talking, which are, which is one of the points I'm going to talk about here. Finding a reason why. I think that's cool that you want to push yourself mentally and physically. Finding your why, like why do you really want to do that? Because maybe it's good enough that you that because you could do it as a kid and because it terrifies you i think and it does you know what the thing is like it doesn't matter so so let me use dorothy again for an example she said she's like oh like running like like because some days she's just on the treadmill and she's running slow or she's running short distances but her goal was just to get on there and she's like oh like it's not really a big goal like anyone could do that and but that's us personally we always put ourselves down so for me i'm like is ten, I'm like, is a hands is walking on your hands for 10 seconds. I'm like, is that really exciting? Or are people like, is that really going to impress anyone? Is my goal too, is my achievement too small? And it, it doesn't matter that the, the point here is what I'm getting at. It doesn't matter what, what other people think, what other people say, what other people can do for you personally, if that's going to challenge you, if that's going to inspire you, then that's okay. If I'm, if I'm comparing myself to a gymnast, which is very hard for me not to do because I'm watching these videos. I go on Instagram and I, and I, that's part of my training. I've committed to 10 minutes of watching and learning, um, form and uh, you're like, your body is supposed to be like, I don't know how to explain it. Your body is supposed to be a certain way, which has really helped. And so if I were to compare myself to someone that's done gymnastics for 20 years or 10 years or two years. I've done gymnastics never. So you can't compare yourself to other people regardless. If someone were to say, I would want to, I want to be able to do a cartwheel. Like that's fantastic. Like some people can do cartwheels all day. Other people have never put their feet over their head. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so I think that it's specific to you. So that's fantastic. Vanda. And then setting yourself up with a clear plan of how you're going to accomplish that and break that down. And the, see, the thing here is that I, I personally, I wrote three pages out of how I broke this down and how to be very specific. And I want to talk about rewards. So you want to set yourself up with rewards here as well, Vanda, like mini rewards, because then you have something to work towards. So that in a nutshell is how I would, let me know if that helps you. But this whole show here is explaining how you set this achievement like you've done. So now that you have something, fill in the blanks of what can also improve this. Anna says, yes, goal versus action. Need actions, work toward goals to achieve. Yes, very good, Anna. 100%, I'm using the word achievement instead of goal. Because when I say goal, people leave real quick. I'm talking about achievements here. <laughs> no one no one wants to talk about I don't need to, I don't want to get into that but that's how it goes people just don't want to I feel like I'm looking I'm looking oh maybe I can just move this over but cool thank you for me personally it's very challenging very helpful you're welcome Ben thanks for letting me know okay let's see what Jen's got here did I This was my second tea. Mara already on my second tea, Jen. 
Where are you at? This is my Ashigaba tea. I like that word. It's a fun word to say. Thanks for the hearts. If you guys are enjoying the show, feel free to hit that hearts button. Make someone feel good this morning. You know what's funny is I was, I, you, you know, like one little thing can change someone's day. And it's funny how minute it can be. But I was walking down the, the strand here. It's there's a, like a water beach area just the other day. And some guy, he was in like a, he's a, he's a bit older. He was in it in a, there's so many different ways to, to be active here. It's, it's amazing. But he was sitting in a chair where you're almost laying down not a chair uh bike like a bike like a bicycle and you're basically laying down and i don't know if he was moving his hands or his feet maybe you can do both in those things it's a really cool contraption i have no idea what it's called but you see it relatively often i think some people may be scared of balance because they normally see older people on it and i think some people are worried about their balance and riding bike bicycles sitting up so he was laying back on his on his chair ride anyways the smallest thing he was like hey he's like nice haircut <laughs> i was running i was going for a little run and he's like nice haircut and i was like thank you and it was just so it was so uplifting and it was the smallest thing of course and it was just like a nice little compliment so i just thought you can do something so small to help change someone's day and then there's the flip side of the coin I was walking a neighbor's dog and the, and the dog, unfortunately, no one walks it very often and it's kind of like all over the place. So I'm trying to like reel it in and like trying to teach it a little bit and been watching Caesar Milan. <laughs> I'm trying to teach it a bit and like train it. And these three ladies walk by me and one of them says, and she like, she, she says it clearly loud enough so I could hear. And she says it to her friends and she said, huh, is that dog walking him? Or is he walking it? And I was just like, uh, and I was like, what is like, and I, maybe she didn't mean anything by it. And I, and I wouldn't say I took it like really personal because I know she was just talking to her friends, but I just thought the two comparisons of like someone that offered a nice compliment and someone that was like snide, a bit rude, or like, I don't know what her goal was with that to be funny, to get a laugh out of her friends. And it, w it wasn't like super insulting to me. It was just like, you know, I'm trying to help the dog learn because it doesn't really know how to walk on a leash. I'm trying to do a good thing. And then you, you have someone that's like, <laughs> it's, it's just, just interesting because you, you, I think more people say those things than you. And I think they do it on purpose. Like they do it on purpose to like, makes them feel better for some reason. So you could change that and say something nice instead. <laughs> okay. Jen says I was a runner all my life, but haven't done much of it la this last year. 10k this year and then next year another half marathon living a healthy lifestyle to promote better physical and mental health is my long-term goal awesome jen that's fantastic so okay so for the 10 so for the 10k i would suggest having like a clear date we, we did talk about this briefly like have a clear date of when that's going to be regardless of if runs open up, regardless of if you're able to sign up, whatever it is, you set a clear date of when your 10K is going to be, and then you work that backwards. So you have, then and then next year I have another half marathon. So you set a date for that half marathon, whatever that date is, and then you work it back, probably about halfway or a quarter of the way is your 10K. That's when you set that for yourself. And then you work it back and you set yourself up smaller ones in between. So maybe it's maybe you're running 3K, for example, for two weeks or probably two weeks. You're probably running two or 3K for three or four weeks, let's say. And then you're running for the next three or four weeks, you're running four, four, 5K. So you're slowly working yourself up. But here's the thing that I wanted to explain to you. I'll get back. To, I'll get. I'll get back to you. I'll answer yours in a second. Here's Suzanne. Here's the thing that I want to explain to you is that when you break your achievements up, so for me, I wanted to, and I'm only using myself as an example. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm like, I don't feel like I'm super important. I feel like this is a tiny goal, a tiny achievement, but I want to use my own experiment to help explain to you. So after 10, after the 10 days, you set an achievement 
and I don't think it should be around food only because we're highly addicted to food. In most cases, the food is unhealthy and it's really hard for us to find other things to look forward to other than food. So that's why I don't think food should be a reward. I'm going to contradict myself in a second here. But after the 10 days, I have one achievement I've set myself to walk, to hold my hands for 10 seconds. After that, I mean, that same day, my reward, if you will, is, is, um, it's, it's Mexican uh, dinner. <laughs> so I'm here in LA. The Mexican food is amazing. I don't have it very often. Uh, you can find healthier options, but if you're having like a beer and nachos, which I won't have, it's not a healthy choice. But that for me is something I've been looking forward to all week. So it's, it's small and it, but it's exciting and it's interesting and it's something that I've been looking forward to. So I'm not going to go and have that meal if I don't do my five second handstand. I just made that decision. Like that's not going to be my reward. So if I don't get it this week, then I'll extend my five second to next week and then my reward will be then. So it doesn't mean you can't have it or you can't do it. It just means that you have to wait until you achieve what you want to achieve. So I, I feel like these little rewards are very important because they give you something to look forward to. So my 20 day goal, my, my 20 day achievement after I walk on my hands for five seconds, that's going to be acupuncture. <laughs> I know it sounds odd because that doesn't interest a lot of people, but it interests me. So remember that everything that you're setting for yourself, all these achievements are very personal to you. So if someone like <laughs> Dorothy's terrified of needles and is like, why would anyone want to do that? So it has to be very personal to you. So it costs a bit more. So that's why it's, um, it's a bit more extreme. That's for these reasons. That's why it's after the 20 days. So your reward should be a bit bigger, the more you achieve. So for me, I always plan to do acupuncture, but I never do it. It's I'm really interested in Eastern medicine, and that's where it originated from. I want to I'm always look into for different ways to heal and help my body. And I feel like so instead of like a massage or some or, or like a pedicure or like something pampering, this is healing. So it's along that same level. So what what helps this is that it's very specific. So for my meal, that I'm going to have on Saturday after I have my tomorrow. So I got lots of training to do. Morning, Sandy. I got lots of training to do today. And then I'll train again tomorrow before I try to accomplish, before I try to accomplish my goal, my achievement. Is, oh, I lost what I was saying now. So, oh, oh, so I know exactly where I'm going. Like I know the Mexican restaurant I'm going to. So it's very specific. I know the date, I know it's gonna be in the evening and I know where it is. Same thing with acupuncture. Like I've already know how much it costs. I know where I'm going and I know roughly the date of, of when I'm, once I achieve, after the 20 days I achieve, then I'm going to book. I don't wanna book before. You, I should book before, right? That's what I would tell someone else. I would tell someone else, you book it. Cause then you have a date and you have to do it. So I should book that before. But again, understand that these are all very specific to me and the timelines are very specific as well. Most people say, I want to lose some weight. And I'm like, why? No idea. Well, how long do you want to lose some weight? I tell as soon as possible. <laughs> so th there's a, like I was saying before, there's a big disconnect between action steps and what you're able, what you're actually able to achieve in that time frame. Okay, Suzanne, what did Suzanne say? Thank you guys for sharing. It's nice to know, like, I feel like I'm not sitting here talking about nothing or you guys aren't understanding what I'm saying. It's nice to know people are here when there's questions, comments, sharing. My biggest achievement this year is to go on a hike with my daughter and granddaughters this summer. That's fantastic, Suzanne. So that's, that's beautiful. So it's act it's actionable. You can actually work towards doing an action it's not a thing a thing is dropping inches and i really think i think dropping inches is better than weight loss but 
you again you don't wake up and say oh i can't wait to drop inches today it's not an action you have susan has an action to work towards so you she has she wants to she knows what she wants to do she wants to hike so i would imagine there's something deeper in there that you would need to find out susan like what is important to you to be able to hike with your daughter and granddaughter why did, maybe you've never been able to do it maybe your parents never did it with you whatever it is but that's the work I'm talking about is that we need to put in the work and the time and effort to break down and be very specific of reasons and how and again most the good majority of people won't do that they won't take that time because it takes the effort to make that happen so and then so Suzanne I would also suggest deciding so you said this summer when is the summer when in the summer so ask your daughter and granddaughter what what date it is that they would like to go on this book it on the calendar and then decide how long it's going to be how long do you even like regardless of any limitation how long would you like the hike to be and then you can work towards that so then you break that down into different months and you say okay well today i'm going to walk a hundred steps because you have something to work towards. Tomorrow I'm gonna to walk 120 steps. However you break that down, these are clear actionable steps for you to work towards your one main achievement and you know how much time you have. So I always, it's just an easy one for me is that if it's six months, if, if you're six months away from an achievement, you should be halfway. So if you have an idea that it's gonna take you 45 minutes to walk up, you wanna to work towards at least walking 45 minutes now it's it's a hike so it's going to be up hills it's going to be up maybe rough rougher terrain so you go and you walk and you you go find some hills in your neighborhood to walk up so that's how i would look at that so thank you for sharing that suzanne what else we got in here dorothy says yeah, you get pedicures no i don't get pedicures I do not get pedicures. <laughs> Let's see. Dorothy says my 50 day reward is a protein peanut butter bar and a hundred day reward is a pedicure. That's awesome. I'm going to make an appointment for the pedicure. So I have a date to look forward to. Yes. So for your reward, you, you book your appointment, whatever it is that you're doing, it doesn't have to be something pampering, but it is like, who doesn't look forward to maybe it's like, a hot stone massage maybe it's uh i'll tell you my bigger one here in a, in a minute but maybe like what maybe it's i like the experiences like maybe you go like i think i would say maybe the hike is your your reward suzanne to spend that time so afterwards maybe you go and have a fancy dinner after your hike or the next day because maybe you travel somewhere not too far and um I'm just trying to think of what, what could help. So maybe your hike is in Kananaskis, for example. I'm just throwing this out there. I know you're in Ontario. But you're those of you that are in Alberta, maybe it's in a, in a hotel. You go on a hike, you stay the night, and then the next morning you wake up and you have a nice brunch at the hotel, and that's what you look forward to. That's a driving force. I mean, who I would, I would love to do that. I'll do the hike. Can I do the hike with you? <laughs> and I know that stuff costs money, but we can budget and i'm going to share i'm going to share mine with you as well jen says i don't have a choice but to lose loose lose is l-o-s-e jen <laughs> l-o-o-s-e is loose i don't have a choice but to lose an inch to fit my wedding dress in a few months so that so then so the inches okay that's that's fantastic so that would be your driving force but so you need to decide what your action in three months, your achievement is in three months. So you know that you have to do something in three months um, to lose inches as a byproduct. Are you with me here? So you would, so you like to run, for example. So in three months, for example, like you could run, you could train for at least 5k you could you could train for 10k dorothy how long does it take i'm obviously not a runner but dorothy's trained for many of these i'm pretty sure you could train for a 10k in three months so you say on like maybe a couple days before your wedding that's going to be or maybe the day after your wedding whatever it is for you remember it has to be very specific to you 
you say I'm going to run 10k or who knows maybe it's a half marathon in three months um I don't think that's long enough <laughs> so let's go 10k so two days after your wedding you're running a 10k and then you break that down what how so you're going to be a quarter of the way there after month after month one after month two you're going to be three quarters of the way there and then after month three you should be fully primed and ready to go so that's an action and that action will cause your byproduct of weight loss of inch loss but understand along the way there's going to be so many other benefits that you're going to feel and then of course maybe after month one you give yourself a little reward month two there's another reward and then month three your final and biggest achievement and reward is to fit in your wedding dress like how fantastic would that be so that's a great way to break that down but understand your achievement isn't to lose inches i feel like that mindset won't help you accomplish your goal your achievement it's the mindset of that's your reward my reward for my actions is to fit in my wedding dress Dorothy says, pick the dates you want to do, Suzanne, and the day you're going to do it. Yes, find those dates and decide. Make that clear decision and then tell people. You know what the thing is? Is that so many people make it a secret. Like, oh, when people, when, I, when I was doing coaching, I, for a couple of years I did online health, co health coaching. And I tell people, I, I would tell people like, have you told anyone? Some people didn't even tell their spouse that I was working with them. I'm like, what, what's the big secret? Like, why is that a secret? So the problem is, is when you start to live healthier, like, oh, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to live healthier. I'm trying to take some action steps. And they wouldn't tell their family members. So they would go to their family members for Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, and they skip out on the appetizers, like I suggest, or they skip out on dessert. And their family members are irate. They're hurt. They're um, sad that they wouldn't eat. Their, they won't, won't eat their food, um, and then that causes con con conflict in their relationship. And that con conflict is what is that difficult word for me to say? Conflict, conflict, <laughs> conflicting, and so there causes so much conflict, conflict in their life with their family who they're close with. They stop. They're like, oh, it's too hard. My spouse won't join me in this journey. It's too hard to cook two meals. My family makes a big deal. But the thing is, if you would have told them at the beginning, like, hey, I'm working towards this. I'm really trying hard. I would love your support with this. Then in most cases, they should support you. And if they don't, and I mean, like, we should really decide how much we want those family members in our life. I'm not saying cut out your family members yet. <laughs> I'm just saying like, if they're not going to be there to support you, you should really consider finding more people in your life to spend that time with. But I think, I know for a fact, it's such a big problem when people make this a, a secret, but it helps with accountability. So that's why I'm talking about it now for my own personal reasons. We have a we have an awesome fitness family group. We have, we have almost 40 people in that group now, which is a good number for us. And we have people that are in, in, I post my handstand videos for them every day. People are encouraging me even as I, as I encourage them. I check in with them for accountability. I share a lesson each day that I've learned from my handstand. So I've found my tribe. I've found my supportive community. I've found, uh, I, I'm following a program. It's a 30 day program on YouTube. And I reached out to the guy who made it and he answered me. So I have a mentor. So these are all the steps that I'm sharing with you, with you guys to help you understand that there's a clear, repeatable process to success with your achievement, as long as you're willing to follow the steps. I'd imagine there'd be a lot of people that would hear us talk like this and be like, okay, that sounds great and not take any action towards it. So knowledge is one thing. We have to learn and understand how to do it. And then we have to take action steps towards it. Let's see what we have here. Vanda says, I love that. Tell me what, what it is that you love, Vanda. What what comment? Because if it helps you, then we can repeat that to other people as well. 
Susan says, I have to go. I'm thinking about an action. Getting up to exercise five days a week is where I'm at right now. I'm hoping it will be a habit. Okay, so Sue, that's fantastic. So you're taking the action. We need a reason why you're taking that action. So getting up five days a week to exercise right now. So why is it that you're doing that? And then we can break that down. And then we can also give you smaller rewards. Like, well, like it's so, it, it, rewards are exciting. They're interesting. They're inspiring. So, so for example, we do live in our fitness family. We do live workouts every Tuesday morning and Thursday morning. So I do the workouts with the group and we expect people to be there. We check in for accountability. How is everyone doing? We have questions going on throughout the workouts about form. It helps motivate. So in the fitness family, we have we ask people, how many times are you setting a goal for yourself this week? Set an achievement for yourself this week. <clears throat> Some people say two. I want to make sure I'm there for both of the live workouts. Some people say three two live workouts and one workout on my own. So we break that down. You set you set that achievement out for you in advance so you know exactly what you're working towards. And then I encourage everyone to, once you complete that two, three, five days in a row, then you have a little celebration. And if it's around food, I hope it's around something like health. Like, like personally, I'm gonna make some healthy brownies. <laughs> I've made some brownies with friends and Dorothy, but I've never made it myself. So I'm going to try to make some brownies for again. We made raw chocolate. So maybe you reward yourself with making something that's healthy so you can reward yourself by eating it. And so that's just something small. But thank you for sharing that with us, Sue. So that's important to understand to break that down and work towards a small achievement. Dorothy says, I give myself around, this is for you, Jen. Dorothy says, I give myself around six months to train for a half marathon. So you, so three months to train for 10K, I think is more than reasonable. So I would suggest that you decide if that's what you want to do. I'm like, I can't do it for you. And, and, it's, and it's my suggestion. You have to be okay with that. You have to want to do it. It must, it must interest you. And, um, but there's definitely enough time if you want to, I would love to hear that, see that, hear about that, to set that 10K right around your wedding day and then set those actionable steps to make it happen. Jen says that's a good way to look at it. And Vanda says she likes the reward aspect. Yeah, so but that's why it's important to break it down. So for your cartwheel, Vanda, you would have a clear picture, a clear vision of what a cart. And, and I'd imagine it's not like one cartwheel. You probably want to do three or four. I'm just guessing. So maybe your, your goal, your main achievement is three or four full. So you start off with just putting your hands on the ground. I know that's challenging for a lot. Like just put your hands on the ground. Like when we were doing in fitness class, even when I was doing work with some athletes, People just to put their hands on the ground and lift their feet up off the ground is very challenging mentally because you're like, how often are both our feet off the ground? Most people aren't jumping, you know, like most people throughout the day don't jump just to jump. And most people don't put their hands on the ground and then get their feet off the ground. It's just very rare. Even when I was, I was doing some, I was trying to do some handstands with the athletes when we were training at the college and I was trying to get them even to put their feet up on the wall. They were really scared to do it because who's used to being upside down. So for you, Vanda, maybe your main achievement is to do three or four cartwheels in a row. So you have to break those, break that down. Maybe your first one is to put your hands on the ground and get two feet off the ground. And then once you do that, um, once you do that, you give yourself a little dark chocolate <laughs> for making that happen. Suzanne says, my biggest reward for me is to be able to just to do it. I have a hard time walking to start with, so just being able to do this would be amazing. So um, that's fantastic, Suzanne. That's, that's, that's a really nice achievement because it's something that you haven't been able to do. I would still like that's I feel like that's that's fantastic that you have something physically. That's something that you want to do. You get to spend time with your with your family. I also think it would be beneficial to have something else there, like something rewarding. Not, 
I don't know. I don't know another word for rewarding. I think it'd be beneficial if you had something like to do. Maybe you can guys. Can you go in like a spa? You have a spa day at. I mean, it's really personal to everyone, but I know we're dealing with a lot of limitations at the moment. I just think that it's fantastic. Like for me, the it's a it's a it's an amazing reward. It's going to be when I can do like a video. And one of the things that that's really been helpful to me is to actually video, which is what I wanted to share with you. And I've been videoing to track my progress and also videoing so I can share with our fitness family. And I throw some short clips up on um, social media as well. And that's part of who I am and what we do is fitness. So it goes hand in hand. But um, for me personally, one of my, well, like my, so I guess what I was saying is that it's, it's going to be feel amazing. And then so videoing myself has has been really beneficial because I'll be able to see where I started and then where I am at the end. And it's going to be clear night and day. But it's also helped me see my form and help me visualize. So for you, those people like we never tell you to jump on a scale. Um, so we definitely want you to stay away from the scale, whatever it is that you're doing. But if you have a vision of yourself working out, for example, like some people have never seen themselves work out. Like sometimes there's like, there's mirrors at a gym. Sometimes there's mirrors in fitness classes. But in many cases, if I'm talking about working out at home, you don't see yourself work out. So if you take a video of yourself for your own purposes, of course, you don't have to share it. You can see what kind of form you have. You can see what kind of um, where your where your where your hips are up too high. You can send that to a coach. Or someone that you're working with and they can help critique where you're at and then not only that but after one month three months six months you can see your workouts when you first started and see how far you've progressed and that's that's uplifting because if you commit to getting your workouts in if you commit to being consistent there's no way you there's no way that you won't be able to improve so instead of being like oh the scale isn't dropping or how, what am I supposed to do if I can't step on the scale? How do I tell if it's working? Well, you're going to feel better. You're going to fit in your clothes. You're going to have more confidence. But now if you do a little video of yourself, you're going to be able to go back in three months and be like, oh my gosh, I, my push-ups look so much better or I look so much fitter now. And again, for me, that was much, it was, it has only been a week when I started videoing and I was like, wow, you can see clear improvements, which was inspiring to me that I'm actually getting better. Okay, so take that to the next level. I was talking about Suzanne and she said it's going to be reward enough. So it will be reward enough for me to be able to walk on my hands for 10 seconds. But taking that to the next level, my biggest um, reward will to be will to uh, be to stay overnight in a five star hotel in the mountains. And most of you may have an idea of where that might be. <laughs> so of course so that's it's very it's very clear where it is it's very clear how much it's going to cost it's very clear that we're going to save some money or put some money aside in the travel fund to be able to reward myself so not only is the actual achievement talking to Suzanne specifically and those of you that just want to i think it's a bit like for Jen for example she's like her your biggest reward may be to fit in the in your wedding dress and then you get and then you get married like that's getting married it's a pretty big it's a pretty big thing it's a pretty nice reward but for me to be able to do the action is going to be amazing I'm, i can't wait to do that but on top of that i'm still like i can't wait to sit back in that hotel and be like i made this happen like i earned this i worked towards it so that's why i still think suzanne as much as it's going to be a reward, there should be something above and beyond to keep that motivation level high. Suzanne says, I know both my daughters would be there for me. They both train for triathlons every year, as well as my granddaughters. Awesome. That's fantastic. So you already have a bit of a tribe there. You already have a supportive community. So, And of course, we're here for you as well. Then it says, yes, I'm not sure what that yes is to. Four in a row. Oh, four in a row. There you go. Four cartwheels in a row. Morning, Jane. All 
Let's see what Dorothy has to say. I'm going to wrap things up here right away. If you guys have any more comments or questions, let me know. But I'm going to I'm going to let you go here. Thank you for the hearts. If you're enjoying the show, hit the hearts. I didn't ask anyone to tag, but if you're still hanging out, you want to tag someone that might you think might benefit from learning more about achievements, definitely tag them in the comments. I do appreciate that. Dorothy says you you got alive. Oh, you got to live. <laughs> you got to live, talk, breathe like you've already achieved it. That way we focus on the success instead of your limitations. Yes, that is beautiful. So Dorothy and I do that ourselves. Like when we talk about the things, our achievements, the things that we're working towards business wise, financially, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, we talk about like we already have it. And that's definitely important. That mindset of, of achievement and unfortunately so that's a good mental aspect here so the thing is like i i for like personally i took some steps back and i was like i, I was in a car accident a couple of years ago and I, there's still some things that i've limit i say how can i say that i feel like i've limited myself because i never I mean, i'm doing it now but i you know i went through some physio i went through some things to help but i don't feel like i'm a hundred percent and i don't like I'm not on board with the people that are like, I've heard this number of times. Oh, it's never going to be the same. Are you never going to be hundred percent? Don't believe that at all. So I feel like it's, it's, it's on our own. It's in our own hands to heal ourselves. And I never really took those steps. So and again, which I'm doing now, I'm making some big strides also. So jumping was something that I've avoided because of the car accident and because of my back. Um, and handstands as well because you jump up with two feet basically and you land and there's pressure on your back um but the thing is is that for me it was a mental limitation and i see this all the time with people in working out like i would go and train someone and i would ask them to do an exercise that i knew for a fact that they were more than capable of physically doing and they would say oh, i can't do that before they even tried and i'm like what do you mean and I go, I, I just can't do it. And I said, have you tried it before? And they're like, no, no, no. But I know, I know I just can't do it. And one of my favorite quotes, and I interviewed Dan Millman. He's a, one of our favorite authors, author of his most famous book, Peaceful Warrior, Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And he says, if you doubt just one person, doubt just one person and you face one opponent, you're already outnumbered. And that's so powerful to me is that we always put ourselves down. We're the first people to put ourselves down and doubt ourselves before we even try. So for me, it was really hard to work with people that were like, had that limiting mindset of, nope, I can't. So someone told them in the past they couldn't do it. They may have tried something similar. You weren't be able, we, we, we couldn't do it. But they didn't even try to do what I asked them to do. And so again, if I, if I look at myself, I was like, I had doubt in my mind physically, like, can I do this physically? Because my back, am I going to make it worse? Is there going to be more pain? Am I going to set myself back? What if I fall? And so I actually did fall a couple times pretty hard. I, I fell in here. I was doing one of the exercises the guy told me on the video in a door frame, and I missed the top and I fell. And usually when I fall, you kind of fall on your side or your shoulder. I fell flat on my back. And I delayed there for a second. I was like, oh, that really hurt. And then I was like, I had like a brief moment of like doubt, like, oh, is that really going to hurt my, really going to hurt myself? And I got up fine. And I was like, oh, so that was a clear message to me. Like, you can do this. That is not a limiting factor. It's your mind that's holding you back. So we have to believe in ourselves and we have to understand that these are things that we can accomplish and not let our minds get in the way. So um, that was def that's definitely something that I wanted to share with you because the mental aspect is super powerful. But I'm going to wrap things up here anyway. So those of you that are in and out, you are welcome to jump off because I'm going to get going too. I got Cody here and he wants to go for a WAO kick. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you jumping in here. I would love to hear about your goals in our fit in our, your achievements. In our fitness family, I'm going to walk everyone through these steps here for the 30 days and share with them and i'm also going to pick 
maybe two or three of them to walk step by step with this and coach them along the way to make sure my new inspired program works for others that we can share with. So that's something I'm excited about too. So everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. And we will catch you later on, probably online. <laughs> have a great day.